All right, gang, David Shapiro here. Uh, we are going to wrap up this uh, tutorial series on uh, using ChatGPT to code. Um, so first, though, I need to do a, a couple of plugs. So one, um, I just recorded a really great podcast episode with Bax T. Future. Um, that'll be coming out on his channel uh, probably later this week. It was a three and a half hour long conversation. Um, and uh, we talked about the, uh, it was it was in one, one part was a recap of uh, 2022 in terms of AI and technology. And then we pivoted to talk about AI startups because that's all the rage right now. Um, yeah, so look for, look for that over on his channel. Uh, number two is I need to do a plug for myself. Um, so one of my goals is to be able to do this full time and I'm not gonna do it with ad revenue. So um, please consider jumping over to my Patreon page and supporting me on Patreon. One person said that they were confused by the levels. They're, they're no different. I just gave you different options for level of support. Um, what, I, what I used to do was I used to have where if you paid enough, I would like give you like one-on-one -on -one time, uh, but I don't have enough time to do that. So instead I just added levels and, and what you do get if you support me on Patreon is access to my ex exclusive blog where I'll give you insider updates as to what I'm up to, some of my thoughts, um, and also you get like priority access because sometimes I'll ask my Patreons like, hey, can you connect me to something or I wanna talk to you guys. Um, so if you wanna get on the inside, uh, definitely hop over to Patreon. And then lastly, if you want to sync up um, and collaborate with me or my team, um, please feel free to come and connect with me on LinkedIn. I checked LinkedIn far more than Twitter or Discord nowadays. So with that out of the way, let's get back to what we were working on. So here's where we left off. Oh, uh, nope, you don't need to see my Spotify. Um, so we got to the point where we have all of our, all of our uh, uh, opinions broken down into JSON files. Um, so let's see, the biggest one is six kilobytes. So that's not too big. Um, and I got this one got cut off, so it's not, this one's not even, not even, not even good, um, not even usable. That's fine. Um, this one got cut off as well. <clears throat> part part of that was probably uh, token limits. Um, this one this one was finished. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so a lot of this is not going to be usable. And remember, this is like rapid prototyping. So. Um, I, that's why I'm not that's why I'm just kind of like going as fast as I can and I'm not really like trying to make a, a finished product um, but this is like proof of concept but we do have some that are good or mostly good at least so let's see what we can do now I went to ask GPT chat GPT uh, how do we visualize it in a Gephi so I've seen people talk about Gephi so I went and downloaded it got it installed um, it's definitely like a free open source one, but unfortunately, it only uses GXF, GEXF or GraphML or CSV. But we've got everything in in JSON. So if we want to visualize any of these, we've got to do it in G, uh, GEXF. I'm not sure what the correct pronunciation is, um, but Graphic Exchange or Graph Exchange. Uh, file. So it's basically a type of XML. So let's see. Um, let's talk to this guy and say, okay, um, I've got a folder called, let's see, what did I call this folder? KG underscore JSON. That is full of that JSON uh, LD formatted um, KG files. Um, I need to convert them to GEXF for Gephi. Um, but here's the problem. Some of the JSON files are malformed, not completed. So we need to first check if they render properly. If not, we can ignore them and skip them. Um, but the second problem is they don't all follow the same, um, the same, uh, let's see, format. 
So let me show you what I mean. So for instance, um, in this one, there's no graph element, but in others there are, right? So there's, there's no graph element in this one, but then we grab another one. Um, this one has similar. Oh, and so by the way, this is why I say we need to keep fine tuning is because when you get to really specific cases like this, um, you want a very consistent format. Um, and, but just telling, just telling it in struct. Oh, so here's, here's an example where there's context and like, yeah, they, there's different like methods anyways. So, um, some have, let's see, for instance, some have, uh, graph properties and others don't, um, we need to write a Python script that will open them, validate them, um, and homogenize them. We need the, the, the ultimate goal is to, um, output a single GEXF file. Is this even possible? Do we need to break this down into multiple steps? All right, let's see what it says. Okay, so it's going to walk through the reasoning that it uses. Okay, there is a valid Py, Py LD, uh, Python is valid JSON LD. Network X library to create graph object from the JSON L data. Cool. Okay. So this just walked through the entire process. Um, <laughs> someone, someone on the internet, uh, I think it was on LinkedIn said, uh, chat GPT is going to make everyone dumber and lazier. You should learn to do it yourself. And I definitely agree. So let's talk about this because this, this video is not going to take too long. Um, but let's talk about the implications of this for a second. I'm, I'm in this headspace because I just had that interview with Bax. So, this just taught me a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't know, right? Um, I didn't know about the Pi LD thing. I didn't know about Network X. So I just had a problem and I said, help me solve this problem. Now, does that make me dumber, right? Because I didn't go read the hard way, you know, like I got, you know, I've, I downloaded uh, the Gephi, you know, um, documentation, but this is still like, I have to skim and, and, and you know, it's 32 pages. That's a lot of reading. What is ultimately valuable? Time. Time is the most valuable uh, commodity in all of existence. It's more precious than gold. So the fact that this is able to help me do more in less time, and I will learn some of the underlying stuff in the wash, right? So here's the thing is like, we build machines to abstract away uh, 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 some of our labor, right? That's what computers do. That's why they have the name computer. They compute math. That was how they started was um, what some of the first use cases of mechanical computers was to calculate uh, firing solutions for, for big Navy guns um, during World War II. And the women who did that, who did all the math, they were called computers. It was the computer pool, but it was human computers. <laughs> Anyways, so we always build machines to offload our mental labor. So this is just the next the next uh, iteration of that. Um, I'm now I'm not saying like, this is not the same as a, as a TI 83 calculator. This is miles beyond that. But at the same time, this will ultimately allow me to do more experiment faster and, and generally accelerate things. And nobody bemoans databases, right? Like to me, if someone's complaining like, Oh, this just makes you lazy. Like that's about the same as saying like, oh, well, you should just print everything out and manually collate your database. Like, no, we're not going to do that. Use SQL. 
Um, and so to me, it's like, and, and I'm saying this as someone who is typically like a Luddite, like I am the last person to adopt new technologies usually, especially in my day job, in my professional life, because you know what? New stuff is fragile and it breaks and it's expensive and it's difficult to integrate, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. But this is different. Chat GPT is different because this is helping me do better. Here, I'm going to give you a nice little kudos feedback. This is great. I don't know why they ha why you have to like all you need is a true false, right? Actually no. I bet they're they're asking you why because that is a even better label and they can improve it further. Um anyways. So All right, get off my soapbox. That's not why y'all are here. Let's move on. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this is fine. Use it to to parse and load it into Python dictionary. That's fine. Um, all right, so uh, let's see, great idea. Let's start with the first script. Um, this first one will use JSON module to try to load the JSON. Um, we should use a try accept clause um, in case it blows up. Um, if the JSON doesn't even load, we can move on. Um, okay, cool. Next, um, let's see. Once the JSON object is loaded into memory, then please, please use um, the PyLD uh, library function is valid json uh, ld um, to check if it is legit assuming it passes that um let's see yep uh, assuming it passes that uh well actually here um Please write this script. Um, yeah. And then while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and see if I need to install anything. So pip install pyld. And then let's see, what else did I need? We need, um, I think that's as far as we need right now. So let's do uh, pip install network X. All right. This looks good. We're gonna need to add the uh, encoding UTF-8. Okay, so it'll tell us if it is valid and if not, excellent. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Um, so then we'll save this here as step 03, validate json.py. Excuse me. All right, and then let's come over here and zoom in a little bit. And we'll do uh, CD to SCOTUS, and then we'll do Python. Wow, sorry, my typing is horrible this morning. <laughs> I think I moved my keyboard around, and it's like just slightly to the left, and so like my fingers are wrong. Muscle memory is everything, man. All right, Python. Uh, what was it? Step. I have two step threes. That's that's incorrect. That's gonna mess with my my OCD. Sorry, buddy. Step 04. No, don't keep it in. That's the wrong file. All right. Come back here. Step 04. My counting is off. My typing is off. It's fine. I'm doing great. Doing great, sweetie. All right. No, my th has no is valid JSON LD. So it just made that up. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see.
Um, let's see. Okay, we got an error. Um, are you sure this is a real function? This might be harder than I thought. <laughs> Chat GPT <laughs> loading wheel. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you ask that question, Dave. <laughs> it's going to get mad at me. All right, let's see if it works. We might not even need to um, validate it uh, because if it ha if it does have a function that allows us to convert, if JSON LD error, okay. All right, let's try this. Oh, and also I just remembered that we need to replace, we need to do um, encoding equals UTF-8. Anytime we have an open um, statement, we need to do that because I encode everything in UTF-8. All right, let's try this again. Uh, has no module validate, that's fine. Um, so in this case, like, it would be great if it had that function, but it doesn't. Okay, so do, 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 do. Um, let's ignore, <clears throat> it didn't work either, either let's ignore the validate step. After all, uh, Python pep eight uh, says it's, or I, I don't know if it's pep eight, um, uh, Python philosophy says it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. So instead of validating, let's just try to convert it directly to GIFX. Um, is that the file type? GIFX, yeah. Um, so let's just try and convert it directly to gefx. Um, again, using a try accept uh, clause. Um, uh, I'd like you to update. <clears throat> yeah. Do, 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 do. I'd uh, like you to update the try accept clauses to catch the errors and print them so I can see what happened. So in total, this script should be simpler. Um, try to load the JSON and then try to convert to GEF X. In both steps, uh, output any errors. Um, if it is successful, um, actually, yeah. Uh, just print the results as we go for this script. Okay, so let's see what it does. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm having it write a script to do an experiment just to see if it'll get all the way through. Because since the cognitive labor is less on me, I'm like, just write this script, let's see what happens, right? Um, as I was talking to some people about this kind of technology, I realized we are infinitely closer to having Star Trek level computers than anyone realizes, or maybe maybe we do realize. That's why the that's why it's uh, it's exciting, because with just a little bit more logic behind this, I could say computer um, download uh, all the Supreme Court opinions uh, about um, about uh, antitrust laws. You know, and Chat GPT says, "Okay, cool." Uh, and it can, if you give it an internet connection, it can go find it and go find that data, download it. You say, "Okay, cool." Uh, what's the what does the data look like? And, you know, computer says it's in PDF format. Cool, scrape it. 
and it goes from there. And then it says, okay, now what do you want me to do, right? And you just have a conversation with the machine. This is capable of that, just with a little bit more behind the scenes. Okay, let's see. Excellent. I love it. So by it, by rapidly iterating, and I have done no coding except for adding the uh, the encoding thing. Actually, here, um, great. I just need you to make one last change, um, and that is to always include um, encoding equals UTF. Actually, I think it's lowercase UTF eight um, while opening, reading, and writing files. Um, everything is uh, in UTF eight. Um, so let's just set that as standard for all our scripts. Hello, computer. Would that be worth something to you? Okay. <coughs> So if so, I was when I was talking with Bax. One of the things he said is he suspects that ChatGPT has a scratch pad. So what does that mean? In technical terms, it doesn't mean that it's writing on a notepad, although that would be cool. But what it what it what it could mean is that if if it does have a sidebar document where it can remember critical pieces of information, regardless of how long the conversation gets. So um, if it does have that, then it's like, hey, let me just keep track of you know the top 10 most important facts about this conversation. Um, but yeah, let's see if it works. All right, cool. So let's come back here and do this. Validate JSON. So look at this, 28 lines, not bad. What am I doing? Run the script. Just run the script. Error while converting. So it looked like all of them failed, but it did something. <laughs> um, yeah, this is not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, it, what might behoove us, so if I, if, if I were doing this project, let's say, for instance, I, I think I got as far as I can get, but let me show you what I would do. Um, so let's, let's rewind a little bit, because I think, I think that this is just going to blow up. Um, yeah, I don't think it, it didn't succeed on a single one of them. Um, so clearly there's some fragility here. Um, we got to JSON files, but they're all inconsistent and they're all different sizes and so on. So what we would need to do is when we're extracting the, 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 the knowledge graph, what we would need to do is probably come here and specify a format. Now, the problem here is if we use FewShot, so this is why I say we need fine tuning. Um, if we use FewShot, we're going to run out of tokens. And even if they double the token, the token count, we're still going to like the more tokens we can fit in at once, the better. Um, it, but now, so there's pro there's probably some intermediary steps, right? Because rather than just going straight from documents to knowledge graphs, which it worked, right? Worked rather well, but the process is fragile we might need to have other intermediary steps such as distilling the information down. Um, so let me, let me show you what I mean by that. Um, here, let me pause it for just a second uh, as I change workspaces. Okay, we're right back. All right, so I took one of these chunks. It's 7,600 characters long. Um, so rather than go straight to knowledge graph, let's see, let's do some prompt engineering and see, cause like we basically have to start over. Um, all right, so uh, there's there's a lot of superfluous information. So um, let's see, how did I word this prompt? This is a super valuable prompt, by the way. And I don't mind sharing it because I've talked to other people and they've figured it out. So this is this is this is the most valuable, one of the most valuable prompts I have ever figured out. So write notes about the following uh, document. Um, uh, let's see, use bullet points um, in complete sentences. Um, I think that's all you need. And then you say notes.
So this compression method um, usually is like the best way to compress anything. Um, yeah. Now, one thing I don't like is that it actually used the actual bullet point character rather than a dash. Um, use bullet points in complete sentences. Use um, hyphen uh, for the uh, point. So this is like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so just, it's a list of assertions. Cedric Kushner Promotions does this. Don King is the president of that. Uh, petition of Don King, allegedly that he had done this as, as part through a RICO pattern. Petitioner sued Don King. Um, but this is not good, right? This is the, the, so the, the reason I'm okay with sharing this is because while this is a really powerful prompt, it's not quite universal. And the reason that it's not universal is because you still lose a little bit too much context. Um, and so you always have to modify this prompt. Um, so the Second Circuit expressed the view that 1862 is blah, blah, blah. Um, great. So we're getting, we're getting some of this, but for instance, we lost like the title, right? Like what, what is going on? Um, so it, we, we lost this. So um, we need to say like, what is the document about? We need to include all details um, such as, uh, yeah. So I'll just tell you, include all details such as uh, titles, citations, uh, dates, and so on. Um, so that should work. So from the last time, um, we stopped here, right? And then I've doubled the length of the instruction. So I also want to point out this instruction would not work in text DaVinci 02. These instructions only work now with, um, text DaVinci 03. All right. So let's see what happens. There we go. See how the sentences are, are much longer. So Cedric Kushner Productions uh, v. King is a case from October term 2000, which the Supreme Court of the United States reversed and remanded the decision of the United States Courts of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Bam. Perfect. Perfect. So this is the kind of information, it's almost even written like a lawyer would speak, right? This tells you real fast in very plain language what happened. So this is information that, that is one, useful, and two, could be embedded in a, um, in a knowledge graph or could be used to extract the information. Now, let me show you something. Um, so actually, this is actually a really good prompt. I'm gonna save this. <laughs> um, whenever you come up with a really good prompt, save it. Um, do, 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 prompt notes detailed. Um, yeah, so we took, we took, let, let me, let's do some token counts. So we took, uh, do, 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 do. All right, so without it, it is 1,966 tokens. And then we com we compress that down to 221 tokens. So we got a, um, a compression ratio of almost 10 to one, and we kept the most salient details and those salient details were, were kept with enough context that like, it's still useful. Like you read this and it's like, oh, this is a great executive summary. Um, so there you go. Uh, so that this is probably the direction that I would go like rewind. Let's take this. And instead of going to JSON, let's try and do this with, uh, with, um, uh, GEXF. Uh, I think you guys get the point. Um, and also we're already like at 30 minutes. <clears throat> so we'll say that we uh, we'll call this a partial success. We got really far. Um, we got uh, exceptional use of, of chat GPT. We found a huge fragility. Um, it was confabulating uh, modules and functions that didn't exist. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. So let me tell you why is because it used its imagination and I'm anthropomorphizing it on purpose. It used its imagination to imagine this is what we would need. And then it just kind of went and looked for it. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't take a whole lot of cognitive architecture to find those mistakes and then say, actually, this is something that would be great if it existed. Why don't I go write it? Right. And so then it, you know, it keeps track of its dependencies. It could write its own user stories, right? Say here, actually, let me just show you. Um, okay. 
um, uh, think about everything that didn't work. Write some user stories um, to submit to various uh, projects like PyLD um, and Network X. Uh, da, 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 um, uh, that would have made this project easier. I think this is going to work. Because here's the thing. Um, by breaking it down into steps, there we go. Yes, yes, yes. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. So even if something doesn't work, it doesn't have to necessarily fix it um, live in vivo, right? This is the process that we follow as humans. There's no need to actually just like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, to, to, to fix it live. It's, I ran into a problem. Let's fire this off and then have another system integrate these. Um, look at this. Oh, man. Oh, man. As a developer, I want to be able to validate JSON-LD data without having to manually catch errors so that I can quickly identify and fix issues with my data. Yes. As a developer, I want to be able to easily convert JSON-LD data to a standardized format so that I can process and visualize the data consistently regardless of its original format. <laughs> Yes, perfect developer story or user story. As a developer, I want to have simple and intuitive way to create and save knowledge graphs in a variety of formats, such as Gexf, so that I can use a tool that is most suitable for my needs. Excellent. Universal converter. As a developer, I want to have access to a wide range of layout algorithms and visualization options so that I can create clear and informative visuals of my knowledge graphs. That's already solved, but great. As a developer, I want to be able to easily filter and analyze my knowledge graphs so that I can gain insights into the relationships between different nodes and edges. Fantastic. These first four or three. Mm, mm, perfect. Okay. I'm going to stop here because I'm about to go down a really deep rabbit hole, but I think I know what my next videos are going to be. And that is using chat GPT for every aspect of the development life cycle. We're going to explore agile, CI, CD, web native, all that, because this is incredible. All right. Thanks for watching.